You know, we kind of touched on this earlier this week when we talked about the trauma sexual assault survivors go through when they try to hold their attacker accountable. And they go through it twice, once during the initial act of violence and a second time when they have to recount that violence in the courtroom. Well, there was an extra layer of trauma for former state representative Aaron Von Ellinger's accuser. Not only was she doxxed and outed by other lawmakers over the last year, Jane Doe was also forced to testify in his ethics hearing. And she was chased out of the hearing room by Von Ellinger supporters and a local reporter. Which is why at least one state senator says things have to change on their end to make this a better process for future survivors to come forward. Joe Paris sat down for a conversation with Senator Melissa Wintrow, who says we need to prioritize survivors. When I saw the verdict, I didn't know quite how to feel. Um, I didn't, I wasn't convinced that there was justice. I wasn't convinced that, you know, I was happy. I mean, this is, it was a sad day. Um, the one thing I did feel was a little bit of relief that the victim's voice was validated. But the biggest thing I thought about is my role as a legislator is the legislature's not off the hook. And that there were plenty of warning signs of his behavior, plenty of conversations. What could we have done, all of us, who witnessed it to confront it and hold him accountable? And I think we, ha we should have expectations for that. Um, and the legislature should be required to have a best practice policy to prevent and deal with harassment in the workplace, period. That is our responsibility. That is our responsibility to each other and the taxpayers. Most notably in the court case last week, uh, Ms. Doe left the stand saying, quote, I can't do this. And it started a community conversation of what can we do to prevent this type of situation, a situation where you have a survivor re-traumatized over and over. And you know, as a lawmaker, you're in a unique position here where you could come up with ideas and say, we could change things. Have you thought about changes that you could be a part of at the state legislature level to prevent what happened to Jane Doe in the future? The average time between report and arrest for a sexual assault, for example, according to one study they did, was about 88 days, almost three months. In that time of the investigation, there is no protection for the person who's been harmed from the person that harmed them if it's a sexual assault. If you have a domestic violence or an intimate partner relationship, you can seek a protection order. But our law does not allow for that if you're not in an intimate relationship. So in this case, Jane Doe could not seek a protection order because of the law. And in the, in the past several months, I've received three phone calls from women who want to get protection orders, and the judges say, well, I can't because the law won't allow me. I bring that up because in 2020, I actually worked very hard with many stakeholders to provide legislation for a civil protection order for sexual assault survivors. I had the support from prosecutors, defense attorneys, law enforcement, advocates, victims, uh, you name it. I couldn't get it out of committee. I want us to go back to that legislation and we need to pass it. If there is one thing we could have done for her and many other uh, survivors of sexual assault, if we really want to help people, is to allow them to get a protection order. And all we have to do is change the law to provide that opportunity. Attention is again being drawn to the House Ethics Committee hearing that involved Jane Doe testifying behind a black curtain about her interaction with Mr. Von Ellinger. The committee was tasked at finding behavior from Mr. Von Ellinger that was unbecoming of a lawmaker. They made it clear they were not there to find a crime. Doe was traumatized in real time as she testified. This is the general public, media, and lawmakers watched on. Doe was then chased through the Capitol after her testimony by select media and members of the public, traumatizing her again. This didn't work. Something needs to change. Over the last year, have you and your colleagues talked or figured out a way to change how this could happen, make it less traumatic? The thing that we don't do well as a culture and a system is center voices of people being harmed. Now, we talk a good game that we do that. But what does it truly mean to center the voice of somebody who's been victimized? It means that we listen to what their experience is and that we are willing to take action to adjust a system or a behavior based on that information. I do think some of the gaps that exist could be filled and some of those things I think are about creating strict confidentiality process in there, accountability for any member who is acting outside of expectations, um, 
actually, you know, making sure that we follow the rules we have. In this case, we actually had rules that um, we wouldn't, uh, that would protect a third party from harm. Well, in this case, the victim was a third party, but we still put her in a public venue. We wouldn't have had to do that. We do have a committee, a joint committee, uh, that was supposed to convene last session, but didn't. So I, I will work with my colleagues to encourage, support, make sure we are convening, and really try to create best practice process. Pretty moving, Joe. Uh, she said a lot of things there. Uh, what did you take away from what she told you today? Well, she also explained to me that she thinks there should be an explicit non-fraternization policy at the state house, meaning that it would be written in code, it would be written as expectations for lawmakers that they cannot date and they cannot be inappropriate with uh, subordinates inside the state capitol. One thing that Senator Wintrow was reminding me, Brian, is that they're in a workplace environment. They are lawmakers, but they're in a workplace environment, and Senator Wintrow says she wants to make sure people feel safe there. And when you have the events that happen with Jane Doe, you can argue that it's an isolated incident, but you can also argue that what's preventing it from happening again. And that's the concern from people like Senator Wintrow. How are we going to make real steps to mm -hmm. really make a big difference here. And she mentioned that respectful workplace committee group that didn't even meet this last session, you know, she and other lawmakers have spoken to me that they're frustrated that they should be able to meet and they should be able to draw up some substantial priorities and substantial rules so that this doesn't happen again. Because you can argue this will never happen again. Everyone learned their lesson. Well, it's easy to say that. You don't want to watch it play out and find out that you don't have the processes again. Especially when you saw the signs as it was happening. Maybe focus on stuff like this for legislation instead of like things like CRT and ESG and SEL and all that kind of stuff. Might be a good way to kind of focus this next legislative session. And thank you very much.